today, God. Thank you for the opportunity to be here. Thank you, Lord. Lord, in the land of the living where there is hope. Jesus, yes. there's no hope in the grave. God, we still have opportunity to make our calling and election sure. Yes. Uh, uh, help us this morning, God, to receive that which you have uh, prepared just for us. Each person has a personal relationship with you, and uh, each person has a particular calling, God, and each person has a particular assignment. And help us, Lord God, be about our Father's business. Uh, occupied till you come. In Jesus Christ's name I pray. Amen. 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 All right, so this is a, this is a healing scripture here, Philippians 4. And we thank God for our guests today. In fact, Philippians 4 and 8, that's a healing scripture. You know, um, so uh, I'm still getting, my book is almost out. And uh, so I'm paying more attention to these things. But I want you to know the answer is the word of God, but you got to apply the word of God. You got to have awareness, you know. And so whatsoever is true, whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, if there's anything worthy of praise, think about these things. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Glory to God. Thank you, Lord. See, and uh, uh, this, these are instructions from the Lord, the Word of God. But, and we all know it by heart, but the point is, do we apply this? Amen. Hallelujah. Because we have so many things tugging at our minds that we don't, uh, uh, so many veils there that got to be ripped off before we get to that pure mind. Amen. So that's what we're working on, ripping off veils. Hallelujah. That blinds us to the pure word of God. Because this is saying to you and to me that you have the authority uh, to decide on what you want, what you're going to think about. Amen. Ooh. Praise God. And, and I don't know about you, but sometimes it's a fight yes. to think about the right thing. Amen. It's a fight to think about the good thing. And then sometimes you think about the good thing, but the rest of your body ain't with you. Amen. Amen. And so what we're working on is getting the whole package together. The whole package. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. All right, so change your thoughts. Think on these things. So we're working on it. We know it's a process. Amen. <coughs> All right. Now, let's get to today's topic. Uh, I think it's slide number 27, so I'm clicking on there real fast. Uh, that's going to give us our introduction, and we're going to go to the scripture. Because we're talking about the Holy Spirit. And the thing about the Holy Spirit is... Uh, these things, these things have been given to us, the, uh, the Holy Spirit, these things have been given to us by God. But men, when I say men, I'm talking about any human being, have taken their own understanding and applied it to the scriptures. Now you need to understand, and I need to understand, you, when it comes to the scriptures, to the word of God, it's beyond our mind. Can somebody agree with you? Amen. Amen. So now if you put your mind on it, you're already in a messed up. You're going down right from that point. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. And so many people have approached the word of God with their mind. And I've been guilty of it, I'm sure, uh, at times in my life. I studied the word of God and had put my mind on it. Uh, praise God. But thanks be to God. He's patient with us, kind and loving, isn't he? Mm -hmm. He'll lead us and guide us into all truth. And he said, when the truth comes, it'll set you free. Mm -hmm. Now, he's not saying a truth uh, that uh, is, is uh, globalized and going to settle every matter in your life. He's talking about the truth for that particular matter. And so you have to, know, you have to keep on pressing for the truth for your matter. Mm -hmm. Because if it's troubling you, you haven't gotten to the truth yet. Because the scripture says the truth will set you free. That helps us to understand that whatever it is that you're struggling with, whatever it is that you, that's coming against you, whatever it is that is a challenge to you, you're not free till the truth of that thing has been exposed, until, until it's been realized. And truth is not uh, manifested in our minds where we're intelligent at. It, it's manifested from our hearts where we cannot, you can't fool your heart. Amen? Amen? Praise the Lord. And you might fool yourself, fool your mind, but your heart still knows the truth. Mm -hmm. So this is where truth has to come. It has to come from the heart. So that's what we're working on today. We're going to be talking about the Holy Spirit. Now it says there is a clear distinction 
between the tongues in Acts and the tongues in 1 Corinthians chapter 12 and uh, through 14. Okay? Now, uh, for the most part, we're referring to the speaking in tongues in, uh, in Corinthians, and I had, have, have you do, uh, we'll be going there in a moment. 1 Corinthians 12, 13 and 14, that, uh, it's talking about the gift of tongues. Amen? First Corinthians 12, 13, and 14, what we're going to be looking at in a moment, is talking about the gift of tongues. Uh, then, when I refer to speaking in tongues, we're talking about the evidence. Did you know there's two differences? See? Yeah. Some people didn't know. See? And that's why this is so necessary. Because you don't want to be robbed of your blessings. Mm -hmm. You don't want no man to rob you. Mm -hmm. Amen. If you're the scripture, don't let no man steal your crown. Mm -hmm. Don't let somebody's interpretation rob you of your blessing. Can somebody say, thank you, Lord? Thank you, Lord. Amen. So you got the evidence, and then you got the gift. See, two different things. But did you know there's a third, a third difference? It's called the unknown tongue. Anybody ever heard of the unknown tongue? Huh? The unknown tongue. The gift of tongues and the evidence. <laughs> Is it on the internet? Because somebody out there might need to hear. Wow. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. And so all of us coming from that one spirit, the Holy Spirit. And it's not difficult for us to understand this because we know that God <laughs> can be anything he wants to be anytime he wants to be it. Yes. Amen. So it's not difficult for us to think that, you know, he could uh, give you a tongue that man never heard. Hmm. Huh? How you, you know, and before we get into this lesson, I'm just feeding, giving you some seed. Uh, how could you interpret something you've never heard before? Oh, don't speak in tongues now unless somebody can interpret it. How you going to interpret something you never heard? <laughs> so that lets you know right there there's a difference. And take time out. Let's find out what the difference is there. Because we're not all talking about the same thing. Are you with me? Mm -hmm. Huh? I think this is important. This is, this is very exciting to me. I don't teach anything that I'm not excited about and have to learn. I, I'm learning and need to hear it again. And uh, so this is very important to me. Amen? Because I'm dealing, and you, you as people of God, sons of God, and next week we're going to get more clear about who you really are. Uh, you need to know this too, because scripture said there's just one body, didn't it? Mm -hmm. And it said that we are members of that body. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. So that means the members got to be all with one accord, huh? Mm -hmm. And that means that the members got something to do. Mm -hmm. and so the members have to get an understanding. Right. Huh? Amen. You can't just sit back and let somebody else follow off of somebody else's mind, off of somebody else's teaching. You got to open up that Bible, and then you got to get some other books, too. Because sometimes it's not so much knowing who you are, it's also knowing what you're not. Right. See, when I went to a seminary for five years, uh, I, I'm, uh, I'm apostolic. Praise God, I know that Jesus is one. I know that he is Lord. I know that he is uh, the Father. He's the Son and the Holy Spirit. I know this. I know that when I'm talking about the Holy Spirit, I'm not, not just talking about an it. Mm -hmm. I'm talking about God himself. Right. And you've got to be careful about that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Amen? Wait, where was I? Praise the Lord. <laughs> Hallelujah. And so you have to be careful with talking about the Holy Ghost because you're talking about God. That's right. Because the scripture says the Lord is that spirit. Hmm? Mm -hmm. Amen. But God can be anything he wants to be anytime Amen. he wants yes. to be it. And we need to realize that it's beyond our mind. And if we could just accept the fact, oh, some of these things, this is just beyond my mind. So thank you, God, for faith. Mm -hmm. <laughs> because yes. if I got faith, I'm going to believe things that are not seen mm -hmm. as though they were. Amen? Amen. That's why he said, have faith in God. Mm -hmm. Well, I find somebody still having faith to believe that it's more to this than what you can see. Mm -hmm. It's more to this than what you can feel and what you have experienced. Mm -hmm. Amen. And so that's what we're experiencing here today. We're moving into a, a deeper depth and a higher height. And you're special for this. Mm -hmm. That's why you're here. Um, so uh, it says there, 
Now, oh, a scripture just came to me, Mark chapter 16. Let's turn there for a minute. Oh, yeah, and I got the unknown tongue there. I got a little bit about the unknown tongue. Mark chapter 16, you got it real quick? Verse 7, that's because our time is of the essence. Uh, somebody read it, please. Mark 6, 16. And these signs, not Mark 16. Seven. Does it say, and these signs shall follow them that believe in my name they will drive out demons, they will speak with new tongues. Excuse me. <laughs> Excuse me. Because Jesus said that. He said that they would do what? Speak with new tongues. Mm -hmm. Somebody say, well, you know, I haven't spoken in tongues. I don't know what to say to you. <laughs> Except that you can. Yes, because it's, a, it's a available to you. Yes, amen. I can say to you that you're blocking your own progress. Yes. Uh, because the fact that you don't believe it is, the, is, is your number one problem. <laughs> you say, they that believe. Didn't they say that? Yes, amen. So you got to first believe. And see, so you got to believe in your heart, not with your mind. Yeah. Oh, I believe it's raining outside. It's raining. The sky is blue. No, uh, it's raining and the sky is blue. You can believe that all you want, but is it true? It's true when it's in your heart. Amen? Say that with the, the heart has to believe. And we can't play. That's something we can't play with. Amen? I like to make that plain. So, um... So uh, Jesus Christ himself said that, that, uh, that they will speak. They, they that believe will speak with new tongues, something that they never heard before. Amen. Now that new tongue could be uh, the evidence, and then it can also be the gift. Once the evidence is there, the evidence is the, is the gift, and then the gift gives gifts. Oh, help me somebody. Oh, help me somebody. Please. All right. Oh, the Holy Spirit is the blood of the new man. Oh, that's deep. We'll go there another time. We can't do that right now, okay? All right, so let's go, to the, let's go now to the scripture, to the scriptures. Um, I can't wait to teach this one, but let's go to the scriptures. Um, okay, let's look at some Holy Spirit scriptures. <clears throat> okay, now here's a, a scripture. First John chapter five. We're gonna get to First uh, Corinthians in just a moment. So that's gonna take up our time. Amen. But let's look at First John chapter five, verse seven. And I have specifically the King James version there. Now I want you to see what that scripture says in the King James. So it says what? But there are three that bear record in heaven: the Father, the Word, and the Holy Ghost. And these three are how many? One. That's deep. Because they, they try to use their intelligence and say, wait a minute, there's three. We got the Father, we got the Son, and then we got the Holy Ghost. That that's sound like one, two, three to me. I just think about what Jesus said. I say nothing. We can't, we can't, we, it's going to be wonderful. Uh, I'm going to be teaching about Jesus in a few uh, days, about how he was called, how he was anointed, how he was sent, how he did nothing. Everything he did was, uh, as a human, he did just like us ministers have to do here on earth. That's going to be really interesting. So what did the scripture say there? It says that th these three are how many? One. <laughs> I don't have a problem with that. But if you got the NIV or another version, they got a problem with it. Huh? That's why you can't just jump up and get a Bible and say, oh, God. no, you got to get a Bible and then you got to 
get another Bible, and then you got get on your knees and pray in them tongues. Yes. <laughs> and get an understanding. Yes, yes. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Amen. Uh, I don't want to take time out for that, but anybody here got a different Bible than the King James? <laughs> Sister, can you, uh, Minister Roberta, could you pull up uh, 1 John chapter 5, verse 7. And what I like to do when I'm studying and using my computer, I like to put the Bible Hub there. And the Bible Hub gives you a host of different versions of that same scripture. And then you can just, you can just show it and see all of it right there at one time. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I hope that's good news for somebody oh, who studied. It's Bible called Hub. Bible Hub. Bible Did you I get it? It said First John five seven. seven. Uh -huh. What Where version do you have? Uh, the NIV. Okay, can you read that, please? For those are three that testify. That's verse seven. The Spirit, the water, and the blood, and the three are in agreement. Mm. Okay. In agreement. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but what did the scripture say? One. Say these three are how many? One. One. See, so you got people using their own understanding yes. that write these Bibles. So you all think that uh, I'm being nitpicking when I do that. Because so you hear me saying it all the time. And she's just nitpicking. I'm not nitpicking. I'm trying to help you nitpick. <laughs> Amen. Amen. That's what I'm trying to do. I want to make you a nitpicker too. And so it's very important to hear what the Word of God say. Uh, and I uh, don't want to spend a lot of time on that. I think you get the idea. So these three, so I say it's the Father and so the Word. So that means that Jesus Christ is who? The Word of God. Huh? Is this the Word? Huh? How much of this Word you know? You know, I know very little. How much you got in it? This is the Word. This is the written Word. So we got to get familiar. We have to study the Word. Now, what else do we know about the Word? It's living, isn't it? Yes. yes it's yes. a living Word. Jesus is alive. Yes. 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 So that means that every time you pick up that Bible, something, something's alive. You got something alive in your hand yes. uh, when you approach it with the Holy Spirit, with the yes. right mind. Yes. That's why you can't sit up in church talking, well, I heard that before. <laughs> <laughs> you just as blind in that area. Because every time uh, uh, they uh, Mom. take their Mom. crowns off their heads in heaven, in Ch Revelation chapter 4, when we talk about that again, the elders there, which represent the church, take the crowns off and they look up. Holy, 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 there's a lamb sitting up there. <laughs> take that crown. Holy, 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 there's the father sitting up there on the throne. Every time they look up, he's being who he wants to be when he wants to be. Can somebody say thank you? Thank you. So this is how, uh, okay, so this, this is talking about the spirit here. This is just saying that uh, when, now, I, now this is when I you went away from the King James because this brought it more clear and it didn't take anything away from the scripture. So I used, I think, the NIV here. This is how Jesus the Messiah was born. His mother Mary was engaged to be married to Joseph. But before the marriage took place, while she was still a virgin, she became pregnant through the power of the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. The Holy Spirit can birth something in you. Huh? Glory to God. Now we know that the power of the Holy Spirit is there because it raised us from the dead, didn't it? Because huh? I heard somebody say, I once was blind. But now I see. Huh? I was dead. Now I'm alive. I was lost, but now I'm found. See, like the Holy Spirit got some power. Not just uh, to bring Jesus into the world, the human part. But he can, he can bring you and I out of darkness into this marvelous light. See, this is a mystery. You can't sit here and just try to tell me about the Holy Ghost. You just All we can do is just enjoy what little bit we can get in our minds together. Hallelujah. Let's look at another one. And I will pray, this is Jesus talking. He said, I will pray the Father, and he shall give you what? 
Another, another comforter. So the Holy Ghost is a comforter. Amen. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. That he may stay with you forever. Mm -hmm. And he's also the spirit of what? Truth. truth. Mm -hmm. Amen. You said you got truth when you get the Holy Spirit. You got truth in you. Mm -hmm. When you get the Holy Spirit, you got the comforter in you. Yes. Yes. Hallelujah. And you say the world can't receive it. Now the unbeliever can't receive this. That's it. That's mm -hmm. it. Now the That's world right. cannot. Jesus said it. He said the world cannot receive this. Right. If you're in the world, you cannot receive this. If you have a worldly mind, you cannot receive this. And Jesus said so. And he says here, because they can't see him. They get, this, this seeing is not with your natural eyes. The seeing comes from your heart. You have to have a hunger and a thirst. This seeing is not like the visual perceptions that we get. This seeing it has to do with hunger and thirst. Yes, yes. This seeing is after Lord, I need you, Jesus. I need, I need. Show me something. Yes. And uh, and so it say they can't even see him, but they cannot even know him. And uh, he said, but you shall know him. He said, cause he's gonna what? Look at line. Uh, third from the bottom. Know him, but he dwelleth with you. Not only does he dwell with you, but he's in you. See, you, say, see, you walk with me, Jesus, but you're also in me, Jesus. That's an amazing thing. Hallelujah about the Holy Spirit. So we're going right here to talk about it. No, you got to do more than talk about it now. Come on now. Amen. This thing is deeper than an it. And then he said, I shall be in you. He said, shall. So that, that means you yes. got to receive it. Mm -hmm. Sit down a minute. And then he said, and he said, but I will not leave you comfortless. I will come to you. Mm -hmm. Now this is Jesus saying this before he went back to heaven. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. He's talking to his disciples there. He said, but the comforter is what? The Holy Ghost. Yes. And uh, whom the Father will send, how? In my name. The Holy Ghost has a name. Anybody know that name? Jesus. He said, he said he was sent him in my name. And he shall teach you all things. That's what's happening with you right now. If you have the Holy Spirit, you're listening to truth and you're receiving it. You're saying, yes, that's true. It's not you. It's the Spirit of God in you. You, don't have, you and I are not that intelligent. It's the Spirit of God in you saying, yeah, that's true. Now, sometimes you hear something and you don't feel connected to it. And the Holy Spirit has to minister to it because sometimes our own minds get in there. That's how I always saw it. So you got to go work that out, you see. And then the Holy Spirit will tell you the truth because it's the only thing that's going to tell you truth. All right, so these are just some more scriptures. Um, there. All right. So Isaiah, now this is important. Isaiah 61, uh, 1 through 3. I want you to look at that on the screen. Now, what did it say there? Line 1. It says what? The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me. Now, who's talking? Isaiah and Jesus is talking. Did you know Jesus has always been talking in the scriptures? Huh? He says what? The spirit of the Lord God is upon me. So he's talking in his humanity. Mm. Did you know that he talked on the cross? Some of the words that we can talk about is Psalms number two, Psalms number eight. We can look at that sometimes in our hidden treasures class. That's what this class is about. It's deep. Yes. We go into a deeper layer, levels. We can talk about that sometime. But he says, because the Lord has done what? anointed me. He didn't just get up and start preaching. You got people that just jump up and preach. But Jesus said he had to be what? Anointed. Now when did he get anointed? Hmm? At his baptism. Because we just got through reading that he was born of the Holy Spirit so he wasn't receiving the Holy Spirit when the uh, Holy Spirit came, descended upon him as a dove. He was being what? Anointed by the Holy Spirit. Yeah. What does that mean? He was being pointed out. He was being endued with power. You can have the Holy Spirit, but you also need the anointing. Yes. Yes. 
And the anointing comes only from God. You can't put an anointing on yourself. Your parents can't put an anointing on you. The preacher can't make you be anointed. When Jesus, as a human, got baptized in the water, in the name of Jesus, because what went in the water? Jesus. Amen. Jesus went in the water. Amen. So baptism in Jesus. And he came up out of the water. He, uh, the scriptures in Matthew 3.17, if you want to look at it. And the scripture says that uh, immediately the heavens opened up. What does that say to you and me? It says that when you and I get baptized in Jesus' name, our world opens up. You come, come, you rise up to a new life. The heavens opened up, and guess what happened? The next thing, God started talking. <laughs> huh? you, all that in Matthew chapter 3, you can look it up. And God started talking. He said, this is my beloved son. Huh? And then he said, in whom I have. I am well pleased. So he's saying, I'm in him. This is my, my son. I'm up here talking now, but I'm in him. Amen. So we're talking about the Holy Spirit. It's a deep thing. It's a deep thought. You can't just put it in a sentence and, and be through with it. You have, to, you have to deal with it at whatever level you're talking about it at that particular time. So he says, I am in him, the Father in heaven. God opened up the heaven and started talking to your life when you came up out of the water of baptism. And he anointed Jesus. Jesus already had the Holy Ghost. Amen. And uh, Jesus, uh, he anointed him. So this, uh, the anointing came what? Upon him. And I, you know, sometimes like the old saints used to say, lay your hands on me, Jesus. I don't mind. It's just like the anointing. Lay your hands on me, Jesus. Oh, hey, I don't mind. It's like an anointing came on him. And then, then he went to, uh, then he, the next thing he did, went into the wilderness to be tried. He was put on probation. Okay. You know, just because you get called, just because you got a gift. All right. <laughs> no, just because you got a calling, you got a gift or something, that don't mean, oh, I'm ready now, let me go. No, you're going you to be tested to see where you're really coming from. <laughs> He ran for how many years? 40 years. So the thing is, probation, if you look up numbers, 40 is the number of probation. 40 years in the wilderness, 40 years in the desert. The children of Israel, we think they were just wandering. No, God was trying them and proving them. And he proved them so well that none of them left out of the wilderness. All of them died there. Did you know that? Only two came out. Because the scripture said they had a different spirit. They had the Holy Spirit, Joshua and Caleb. They the only two came out, old and young. Don't come and tell my old people. You better, All right. you better wake up and smell the coffee. All right. You better wake up and smell the coffee. Old and young came out. That's right. Amen. Yes. Amen. Praise God. Keep on living. One day you're going to get Hallelujah. on. Hallelujah. Look how many things are going to All right. <laughs> and then where you want to die. So when the spirit of truth comes, he will guide you into all truth. That's what's happening with us right now. We're being led and guided into all truth. And God is so smooth with it. We didn't even know we was being led. <laughs> we just say, oh, I'm going to church today. <laughs> and God said, yeah, go right ahead. <laughs> all right. Oh, and yeah, and Jesus said, the Spirit of the Lord, he anointed me to preach. And then Acts 10, 38, the scriptures talk about how Jesus was anointed by God going around healing people teaching people, preaching to people. You got to be anointed by God. You can have the Holy Spirit That's and don't right. be anointed. That's That's right. Because right. right. you got to be, you got to pass your test. Mm -hmm. And Jesus passed his test in the wilderness. Now, how did he pass his test? Mm. Huh? He knew the word of God. If you don't know the word of God, you're not passing your, your test. You might have passed the man's test. He might, you know, the school might have said, okay, you got your degree. Go on out there and open up your church and all that. You can push. But what did God say? Because he gave us the example. He said, it is written. You got to know what's written. 
when you know what's written, it changes your whole atmosphere. And that's why we have to study, like what we're doing now here, with the ears of Christ, then go home and look at, the, read that word of God, which is the living word of God. Hallelujah. And then pray to him uh, for a revelation. So, now, uh, and this you'll find in Luke yes. and Matthew. We don't have time, but you can look it up. These are the same words that Jesus said. Because he had read Isaiah. Did you know Jesus read Isaiah? Yes, he did. And he knew it was about him. <laughs> so he got up there on that particular day. They, and that particular day, he went into the temple. And guess where they was reading from? <laughs> Isaiah. And so he was sat down and waited for his turn. <laughs> then he got up and picked up that book and read what we just saw up there. He said, it's talking about me. <laughs> he said, this day, this scripture has been fulfilled in your eyes. Yes. All right. So Jesus was excited about the word of God. Now, you know, people of God, let's move, let's go to the, uh, to our scriptures now. Because we can, we got, we on, be on this for a while, amen? amen? Now we can pick up with this next week some more. Let's go to uh, 1 Corinthians uh, chapter 12. Uh, it's important because somebody here needs to start getting a head jump up. Uh, a head start on where you where you're at with God. Now we're going to go First Corinthians 12. Now remember, uh, we talked about um, we talked about the tongues, the, the Holy Ghost. You got the evidence, huh? The evidence on the day of Pentecost, because we got to redeem our time here. On the day of Pentecost, they all heard them speak with tongues. Evidence. They knew. Praise God that something had happened for, to them. Mm -hmm. They knew it because they were uh, the Holy Spirit was speaking through them. The Holy Spirit came to them just like Jesus said. He said, "I will send you a Comforter." Mm -hmm. Amen. And so He said, "He said, I can't. It can't come until I go away." Right. In other words, I got to come back to you. Right. Um, right now, I'm holding your hand, but now the next time, I'm gonna be inside of you. The power. See, I got to come back to you a different way. Hallelujah. So look at us, uh, uh, and remember, so we have the evidence of tongue, we have the gifts of tongue, mm -hmm. the gift of the Holy Ghost, and then we have the unknown tongue, three. And when you talk with people, you better know which one they're talking about. Mm -hmm. huh? And you don't have to always get into no argument with nobody, <laughs> but you better know what you know. Amen. You better know something for, something for yourself, because the Holy Ghost is what? Personal. Once it comes inside of you, it belongs to you. Yeah. It's personal. That's between you and him. You can't tell me about what my Holy Ghost is doing in me. Because you don't know my story. Right. Uh, when I get down to pray, praise God, the Holy Ghost is uttering things that I can't, that's beyond my mind. Taking my real issues to God in heaven. Praise God. May not be your issues. Mm -hmm. But the point is, you better find out what your issues are so you can get, uh, you know, so you can get rid of them. Somebody's sitting in here with issues right now. My Lord. And you need to first acknowledge, I got an issue. And then get down on your knees and go before God and let him know, Lord, I got an issue. Mm -hmm. Amen. Praise God. Mm -hmm. And he will work it, work it from there. Yes. The more honest you are. He will work it from there. Praise mm -hmm. God. Look at uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 12. It says what? Now concerning spiritual gifts, brethren, you got it? 12 and 1. 1. Now concerning spiritual gifts, brethren, I would not have you to be ignorant. You know that you were Gentiles carried away unto these dumb idols, even as if you were led. In other words, you were not Jews. You and I, we're not Jews. We're Gentiles. And we were uh, in darkness. And he said, I want to give you, uh, wherefore I give you to understand that no man speaking by the Spirit of God 
can call Jesus accursed. You know how they call him Jesus now? They, uh, you know how uh, you look at TV and the cartoons and stuff, they making jokes about Jesus. Uh, talk about him very freely now, putting him down. You know, you see that kind of, you see that very common now. Uh, so you can see that we are living in some dangerous times. Amen. He said, the only way that you can call him Lord is by the Holy Ghost. Uh, just because you're saying Lord, Lord, that does not mean that you are calling on the Lord. Uh, you, can, you, you, you have the Holy Ghost, you can really call on the Lord. And you know, and uh, uh, jumping ahead here, sometimes they're saying, well, you know, don't speak in tongues in the church. Uh, don't speak in tongues in the church. Well, we're going to divide, rightly divide that in a minute. Uh, uh, because people don't know what you're talking about. Huh? You ain't talking to them. <laughs> uh, and then if you're going to have somebody don't speak in tongues in the church, if you don't want, if you don't want to speak in your unknown tongue, because that's the tongue that you're using at that time. You're not speaking another time. You don't need nobody to interpret because you're not talking to nobody. Mm -hmm. You're talking to God. Mm -hmm. Amen? Because you have a personal relationship Amen. with him. Is that all right? Amen. 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 You can tone it down. Okay, but well, thank you, Jesus. You can tone it down. But then uh, if somebody's going to stop you from praising God, in an unknown tongue, praise God, then how in the world are they going to be able to say out loud, thank you, Jesus? Right. They can say it in their language. <laughs> right. uh, they can say it in their language, but you can't. Are you, are you hearing me? Yes. Mm -hmm. So it gets really sticky, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. When you don't have an understanding. But when you have an understanding, you know somebody is in error. Just make sure it's not you. Mm -hmm. Amen? Just make sure it's not you. That's all. And see what it says here? Verse 4. Read it. Now there are diversities of gifts, but the same spirit. Mm -hmm. Everybody does not have the same gifts. Mm -hmm. But some people may have the same. It just says it didn't say that everybody was different. It just said that there are different gifts. That's what it says. Mm -hmm. It says there are diversities of gifts. There are many gifts. So what, where did the gifts come from? They came from the Holy Ghost. Huh? And I turn to Acts 2.38. That's why Acts 2.38 is so important. Let's go there a moment. Now if you go to Acts 2.38, you'll see something very important there. And so now, this is after uh, the Holy Ghost had fallen in Acts 2, chapter 4. Uh, Acts chapter 2, verse 4, Holy Ghost came down and there was the evidence. Everybody was speaking in tongues. Mm -hmm. uh, they were speaking in other tongues. Mm -hmm. that, that was, uh, they, they, in other words, they spoke in tongues. That's the evidence. Or oh, I feel like marching. Mm -hmm. And then they spoke in other tongues. Mm -hmm. So they had the evidence and the other tongues. Those two things that occurred when the tongues came. Are you listening? Say it one more time. They had the evidence. When they spoke in tongues, that's the evidence. Huh? Because they wasn't using their mind. The Holy Ghost takes over your mind. If you're speaking in tongues and your mind is in it, go sit down because you might fall if you shout or something. Because you, your mind is overtaken by the Holy Spirit. Holy, God can overtake your mind. Did you know that? Mm -hmm. And he has to overtake your mind. You ever heard of a person being demon possessed? Mm -hmm. What happens when a person is demon possessed? Mm -hmm. the, the devil took over their mind. Now you mean the devil can do something God can't do? Mm -hmm. Come on now. Now the devil can take over somebody's mind. <laughs> Amen. And you telling me God can't take over somebody's mind? Right. Thank you. Good example. Thank you. <laughs> huh? Help me somebody. <laughs> so your mind gets out of the way. Amen. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they mimic God. Mm -hmm. Your mind gets out of the way when the Holy Spirit came on that day. They was in that room and the scripture all of a sudden. Mm -hmm. The Holy Ghost. They didn't know nothing about the Holy Ghost. Mm -hmm. They just was being obedient to Jesus. He said, go there. To, you know, because he, uh, number one, he had 
breathed on them. Mm -hmm. I'm backtracking a little bit here, you know, Take because time. you're scholars, so I'm just helping you. Yeah. Uh, you know, I'm backtracking a minute, but it's in John chapter 20, and uh, they breathe. Uh, uh, the scripture say Jesus, John chapter 20, 20, verse 22, say Jesus breathed on them. And that's before he went back to heaven, amen. But after he had come up from the grave. So he was in his resurrected form. Mm -mm -mm. And he said, he said to them, receive ye the Holy Ghost, didn't he? Mm -hmm. He breathed on them. Don't you know, a lot of people are confused about that. Mm -hmm. Say, they got the Holy Ghost right then and there. No, he said, receive ye the Holy Ghost. Mm -hmm. Amen, he breathed on them. Now, when is the first time we heard about breathing on somebody? God, he breathed on Adam, didn't he? Huh? He breathed on Adam, didn't he? And Adam became a man, a human. Oh, I, glory to God. Huh? Then Adam sinned and lost his identity. So Jesus went, came, died, went to the grave, came up out of the grave in his resurrected form and breathed on him again, gave him back his identity. Amen. Amen. See, that's what that was. And so he says, he said, I'm sending you to Jerusalem. So he sent them. He not, you, you're going to get, all this is going to happen when you get to Jerusalem. I'm going to send you there. And you're going to receive the Holy Ghost. Amen. He said, now receive it because you're going to become the new man. Amen. Hallelujah. If you look at Acts, uh, where were we? Acts chapter 2, mm -hmm. verse 38. Mm -hmm. Uh, then it says, Then Peter said unto them, Repent and be baptized every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of your sins. So your sins are removed when you are baptized in Jesus' name. Because yeah. that's what the scripture just got through saying. And so your sins, so it says for remission. Remission means it's a removal of your sins. And then he said, and then after, he didn't say you got the Holy Ghost from the baptism. Mm -hmm. But then he says, and, two events. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And ye shall receive. Now let me look here and see what the scriptures say. And ye shall, it didn't say ye will have it. Ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. Because you got to decide that you want it. Mm -hmm. Amen. Everybody who get baptized do not receive the Holy Ghost. Right. Hallelujah. You shall receive it. Something's going to happen to you if you let it. <laughs> Glory to God. Anybody here ever let it happen to you? <laughs> I let it happen to me. Lay it on me, Jesus. I don't mind. <laughs> uh, 238. You shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. See, so that's the evidence right there. The gift of the Holy Ghost is the evidence. Now we're going to 1 Corinthians chapter 12. We're talking about the gifts of the gift. Are you with me? Amen. The gift has gifts. It has abilities that it gives to the people that receive it. Now, is anybody getting a, a, a distinct difference now between the different... Uh, aspects of the Holy Spirit. We know we have the unknown tongue. Two scriptures that talk about the unknown tongue. First Corinthians chapter 13. Let's look there a minute. And then there are some scriptures here in, um, oh God, just, uh, oh I'm glad. I said we're going to, we got more weeks on this. Okay. Um, What scripture did I give you? First Corinthians 13. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, uh, and I think it's uh, oh, I'm to John. First Corinthians 13, and I think it, I guess it's just verse one. Yeah, it says right there. What does it say? Though I speak with the tongues of men and of angels. You're going to be talking uh, uh, not just what people can understand. It's clear. And if I don't have love, 
See, it's letting us know how powerful love is. But right there, we're seeing that you can't just say, oh, we have to interpret, shut up. Let, let that person shut up because we ain't got to interpret. It ain't about you. Amen. We don't need to interpret this because this is not the tongues. The Holy Spirit is not ministering to the church Amen. right now. It's ministering to that person's soul. Yes. That person needs help. That person needs strength. Yes. Yes. That person needs to be edified. Yes. That two person need to be have joy. Then you say, why are you loud? Some people loud, some quiet. That's all. I'm a loud person. I said, I've been holler. Because you know, if you've been where I've been, you might holler too. Yeah. Come on. Come on. Yeah. All you did was have, had to bake cakes and, and uh, you know, <laughs> go out there and plant roses. You don't know what I'm talking about. Uh -huh. <laughs> 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 Are you with me? Amen. 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 But I'll tell you one thing, you better try to get some of that that I got because by the time you, uh, as the years go by, you got to work out your salvation, each and every one of us. Yes. You Amen. might be somebody's wife and he done pampered you yes. and, then, uh, and then you didn't get yourself together with God. Mm -hmm. You were more into him than into God. My oh, Lord. Mm. You got a, a day of awakening coming. Yes, yes. Each person got to make that calling and election sure. Yes. 